Hello everyone and welcome to this special time of worship, Christmas Eve 2021. We pray that this is a time of true worship for you if you are in your home on your own or whether you are in your home with your family, that this would truly be a time of worship, that you are lifting your heart to the Lord in thanksgiving for the gift of Jesus Christ, the Son and the Savior of the world. We're trying to make this time of worship for you there at home as much like our time in the sanctuary as possible. And so we're going to begin as we begin each year reading together from Luke chapter two. You will see the words on the video and the parts that are underlined are the parts for you to read out loud. Please participate. This will help you to enter in to this time of worship. From Luke chapter two, verses one through 12. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste. They found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. We're now going to light the Advent candles. On the eve of our Christmas celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ, we light all of the candles of the Advent wreath. First, we light the candle for hope because Jesus is our hope. Second, we light the candle for peace because Jesus is our peace. Third, we light the candle for joy because Jesus is the source of our joy. Fourth, we light the candle for love, because Jesus is a perfect reflection of God's great love for us. Now, finally, on this special night, we light the center candle, and this is the Christ candle. He is Emmanuel, which means God with us. God is with us. Let us pray. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels. 
the great glad tidings tell. O come to us, abide with us, O Lord, Emmanuel. Amen. Let's sing together, O Holy Night.
us pray. O Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let the incense of our prayers and praises ascend before you. You have come to save us and set us free from being slaves to our sin and bring us into the glory of eternal life with you. Our hearts are full. Thank you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hello, friends, and welcome to this Christmas Eve children's message. Did you guys know that tomorrow is Kenny Wanger's birthday? Did you guys know that? It's his birthday tomorrow. Do you guys know who Kenny Wanger is? Well, here's a picture of him. And tomorrow is his birthday. He turns 81 years old tomorrow. Isn't that great news? Well, did you guys know that? No. Hmm. I wonder why not. Did no one ever tell you that tomorrow is Kenny Wanger's birthday? Well, do you know that tomorrow is Jesus's birthday? I bet your parents know that tomorrow is Jesus's birthday. How do you know or your parents know that tomorrow is Jesus's birthday? Well, someone told them, right? You know when people's birthdays are because they tell you or someone tells you, hey, tomorrow is that person's birthday. How do we know that tomorrow is Jesus's birthday? Well, we know this because a long, long time ago, on the night that Jesus was born, people came to visit Jesus. You guys remember who those people were? Well, they were shepherds. So the Bible tells us that shepherds were nearby keeping care of their flock that night. And an angel told them that Jesus was born. And so they went and they saw the baby Jesus lying in a manger, kind of like right behind me. And then they knew that this was such great news that they had to tell other people about it. And then those people told people, and those people told people. And then Jesus grew up and he had followers and they, had, they wrote down everything Jesus did and they put the story of Jesus's birth in their books. What we have is called the Gospels. And so many years ago, they knew that this little baby coming was so important, that it needed to be shared, that people must know about Jesus. And so we still celebrate today because people continued to share the story of Jesus. We celebrate Christmas today. You celebrate Christmas today because someone told you the story about Jesus, because someone told your parents the story about Jesus. And as our, in our turn, we are to tell others about the story about Jesus, because no one like Jesus has ever been born. He was God coming to us to, to show us how much that God loves us. God loves us this much that Jesus came in the form of a baby. He loves you, and he wants you to love him back. So ask your parents or other family members to read you more stories about Jesus because it wasn't just his birth that was amazing. It was his life, his death, his resurrection, his coming back to life that's also totally amazing, and that is life-changing. And that is new, good news of great joy for all people. So tomorrow morning, do not forget to sing a happy birthday to Jesus and thank him for coming to save us all. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you loved us so much that you sent Jesus in the form of the baby to live a perfect life, to die on the cross, to come back to life, to save us from our sins so that we can have eternal life with you. Lord, thank you that people have told us this story, that this story has come from generation to generation and help us to continue telling this amazing story of how Jesus came to earth and what Jesus did, Lord. Surround us with people that are going to keep telling us those stories, Lord. Oh, Lord, just ask your blessing over everyone worshiping with us today. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. And I hope you remember what Christmas is all about, that God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to save us all.
For the last month here has been what matters most. After all of the turmoil of the last two years, after all of the disappointments and losses, it's a good time to take a step back and ask what matters most in our lives. I know that most people will say family matters most, or friends matter most, or good health matters most, or financial stability matters most. And all of those things, they do matter. They do matter. But do they, should they matter most? More than where you are in your faith. Should they matter more than where you are in your relationship with God made possible for you because of the coming of Jesus Christ. I love my family with all of my heart. I mean, my dear husband, my kids, my grandkids, my brothers, my sisters, all of them. I love them with all of my heart. I'm so happy when we can be together. And so it's hard. It is hard to say that they don't matter most in my life, but they don't. My relationship with Jesus Christ matters more to me than anything else in my life because without him, without what he came to do and what he did do for all of us, I'll only be with my family members for a very limited number of years here, just a teeny tiny little blimp on the eternal scale. I love my family so much that I want to spend eternity with them. Well, some of them, only kidding. And that's why Jesus came first. That's why he comes first for me. Because he makes life here on earth worth living with my family and life in heaven possible with my family. Tonight on this Christmas Eve, I want us to look together at a scripture from 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. 
We proclaim to you the one who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard and seen. We saw him with our own eyes and touched him with our own hands. He is the word of life. This one who is life itself was revealed to us and we have seen him. And now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was with the Father and then he was revealed to us. We proclaim to you what we ourselves have actually seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy. Jesus in this passage is called the Word of Life. Because of what was spoken, all things came to life through him and for him. But in this passage, he is also called eternal life. Jesus himself is eternal life. Jesus is himself salvation from eternal death. Jesus himself is, is eternal life. In every other religion, the founder points to eternal life, but because Jesus is God come in human flesh, he is eternal life. To be united to him by putting your faith in him is to have what he is, eternal life. There is nothing else for you to do but to put your faith in him. He did it all. There's nothing that you could do that I could do to earn that on our own. So many people keep their distance from Jesus and the church that proclaims him because they've decided that what really matters is that they live a good life according to their own opinion that they're a good person compared to that person over there, perhaps. And they know some of those church people, I mean, they know how they act outside of the building, right? What matters most? What matters most here? What people do or don't do or what God has already done? We can't let people get in the way of us starting and growing a relationship with the one true God whose love for us is so magnificent, so patient, and so unconditionally, mind-blowingly wonderful. Can't let people get in the way of that. I mean, nobody has the moral resources within themselves to earn their right to heaven with God. No one, no one lives a perfect life. Only Jesus did that. No one can earn their right to heaven. That's why Jesus came, to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. He lived a perfectly beautiful life of courage, humility, boldness, and love. He paid the ultimate price for our sins on a cross of death that we deserve, and he opened the way to heaven for us through his resurrection. And it all started so quietly, so personally with a visit from the angel Gabriel to a young girl named Mary. This is the majesty and the mystery of our God. A God who created everything out of nothing, whose power can still the storm and the waves of the sea, who comes quietly and personally to each one of us when we open our hearts to him in faith. Abraham Joshua Heschel wrote in his book, I Asked for Wonder, wrote, We can never sneer at the stars, mock the dawn, or scoff at the totality of being. Supreme grandeur evokes unhesitating, unflinching awe. Away from the immense, cloistered in our own concepts, we may scorn and revile everything, but standing between earth and sky, we are silenced by the sight. I think that we can agree that these last years have not brought out the best in some of us. 
Many have grown cynical, suspicious, critical, and bitter. Many have isolated themselves from others with whom they disagree. Perhaps we have forgotten what truly matters most, or rather, who matters most. If anybody had reason to be cynical, suspicious, critical, and bitter, it was Jesus, right? But no, no. His way was and is the way of truth, of love and forgiveness. We already read from 1 John, we saw him with our own eyes and we touched him with our own hands. He is the word of life. This one who is life itself was revealed to us and we have seen him. And now we testify and we proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was with the Father, and then he was revealed to us. We proclaim to you what we ourselves have actually seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship was with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy. These eyewitnesses were changed by him. They were filled with joy because they were filled with faith in who Jesus was and still is. They're calling out to you from history. They're calling out to us from heaven. They invite you and me into the joyful fellowship of faith with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. This is what matters most at Christmas and all year long. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May you be filled to all fullness with the joy that comes from him. Amen. As we approach the table of the Lord on this holy night, I invite you to bow your head and pray with me. God of grace and truth, in Jesus Christ, you came among us as light shining in the darkness. We confess that we have not welcomed the light or trusted your good news to be truly good. We have been cynical. We have been suspicious. And we've closed our eyes to glory in our midst, expecting little and hoping for even less. Forgive us. Forgive our doubt. Renew our hope so that we may receive the fullness of your grace and live in the truth of Jesus Christ the Lord. This we pray together in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends in Christ, the scripture tells us in Psalm 103, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. So because of the steadfast love and the compassion of the Lord, know that you are forgiven and may you be at peace this night as we start anew for his name's sake. Thanks be to God. Let us continue in prayer. Almighty God, as we approach this table and this holy meal, we bow before you and we praise you. Thank you for the gift of Jesus, for his obedience to be born here, to live a perfect life here, to die a brutal death here in order to bring resurrection life to all the world, to all who will confess him as Savior and Lord. 
And now we pray that this bread and the fruit of the vine will be full of your presence, O God, that we may have communion and joyful fellowship with you, with the saints on earth and the saints in heaven. All this we pray together in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And after giving thanks for it, he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood and poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you. Every time we eat this bread and we drink from this cup, we are proclaiming the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again one day in glory.
Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you that you have come to us. Thank you for the gift of salvation given to us through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the gift of this communion meal with you and one another on this holy night. May all we do honor this gift. And we pray it together in Jesus' name. Amen. As we go into a time of prayer, there will be moments of silence in the prayer for you to speak aloud or silently the names of those who are on your heart tonight. Let us pray. Holy God, we lift our voices in prayers of praise. For you have lifted us to new life in Jesus Christ, and your blessings come in generous measure. Especially we thank you for the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ for us. We thank you for our calling to discipleship after the example of our Lord. We thank you for the privilege of worshiping together tonight. We hold up before you human needs, God of compassion. For you have come to us in Jesus Christ and shared our life so we may share his resurrection. We pray tonight for the healing of those who are sick. The comfort of those who are dying. The peace of those who are grieving. The renewal of those who despair. The restoration of those who have wandered away. The reconciliation of those who have divided. and the revival of the Spirit's power in the church worldwide. May our Christmas celebrations, whether on our own, with a few, or with many, O oh Lord, may they honor you. May they name you. May they make much of you. Oh Lord, may we be kept close to Christ and be drawn closer to one another in the swaddling bands of his wondrous love. This we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray together to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to get your candle ready as we prepare to sing Silent Night. Hear these words from the beginning of God's word in Genesis and in John chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and not one thing came into being without him. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. 
there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. That light was heaven's light. That light was Jesus. Let's sing together. government will be on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end he will reign on david's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. Thank you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who matters most. In all that we do, may we honor him. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Joy to the Lord. The Lord is come.
let earth receive her king. Merry Christmas, everyone. Amen.